Here at Caterpillar Operator Stadium, we're all about showing you the latest and greatest technology and how it can help you every day. Coming up now, we've got our Spotlight Series with the 930. You can get a chance to see Brian Kane with expert Joel Grimes in the dirt and Brad Vanderveer in the Tech Hub during this Spotlight Series. So get ready to find out about the 930 and what it can do with command technology. this new 930M that we've got coming online here in our spotlight. So Brad Vanderbeer, why don't you bring this machine out and let's do that work. Come on out. Yeah, Speedo, now, get that 725 in place. We're gonna move some material for these folks. What do you think? Yep, they're gonna put that tractor to work. And I'll tell you what, guys, I wanna invite you to look at the flashing blue light on the top of that 930. And what that's telling us from a bystander view is that machine is being run remotely. Caterpillar is extremely proud to expand Cat Command with command for loading available on our 926, the 930 we've got in front of us, and our 938 model. Line of sight or non-line of sight operation allowing you to run it from a remote location. Now, Brad, I'm looking around. I don't see you. Where are you, my friend? Hey, buddy, I'm in an air-conditioned office over here next to you, and uh, it's nice in here. You sweating out there, dirt? Oh, the sun's come up a little bit. Oh, I'd rather be where you are, my friend. I'll tell you what, I'm sure that's a comfortable spot. So have a look over here in the command station. That's where Brad's running this non-line of sight machine. Now, for some of the operators who might be out there aspiring to run a machine this way, and you're thinking to yourself, how am I going to run it when I'm not in? What's that seat of the pants feel to make me connect it to that machine, to connect it to that job? Brad, what would you say? What feature sets are you using to get that work done? Yeah, so I was just in there setting up my rim pull that I have available. If I were in the cab, I have that too, also here in the command station. So I was setting it for the ground conditions. Got it set at medium today. Seems to be working real well. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little load in this truck. And I also have kickouts. You'll see once I get ready here, I'm gonna do a return to dig kick out. And then as I back away from the truck, I'll do a back to the ground lower kick out, and that's all automatic. It puts that bucket right where I need it for the, my next pass. Back, back over here and get another load to put on Speedo, and we'll keep moving some material and load that truck. Now, I can see you've got some cameras going on in there. How are those helping you fill that gap at the seat of the pants field? Yeah, so it, really I've got better visibility from inside this station than I do from in a cab because I have right straight down to the sides of the machine if I'm in tight confined areas. I also have 360 view around the machine with the front and the rear camera and I have an indication on the screen that tells me when my articulation is in straight for petting information. Works really really well Joel. Yeah, I gotta tell you your approach on that. And even those side cameras, goodness, you can see front tire, rear tire, counterweight corners, everything you need to do that job. Now, let me make it real for you. When would you put technology like this to work? I'd like to recognize one of our valued customers who's an early adopter of this type of technology, a group by the name of Associated Terminals. And these guys know their business, they know their profit centers, and they know their risks. What they do, if we can play that on the big screen, is they are doing bulk cargo unloading midstream on the Mississippi River, one of the largest by volume ports in all the globe. And when they're doing that, efficiency on the port is every clam bucket coming out is full. And they use equipment to make sure that they have a nice healthy stockpile to push all of that material up such that every bucket is full and efficient. Second to that, they're working in wet, up and down, tidal conditions. And the stats from the coastland is if you fall in the water, there's about a one in seven chance that those numbers aren't looking very good for you. So they are removing operators from those environments. They're never putting them on a barge and putting them in a safe, nice command station where they can run remotely. Now, second to that, they're doing it over 150 miles of coastland. That job might be 50 miles inland. It might be 150 miles inland. And at the flip of a switch, they can toggle between whichever machine, whichever barge, whichever ship is being actively unloaded. Now, Brad, I know you spent some time with those guys. Any other features that would really help them do their work well? Yeah, so they're in a really slip floor application down in the bottom of those ship holes. So we've got a float function that they can put that bucket in float when they're scraping the floor of that ship and it keeps them from 
raising the front tires up off the ground gives them really good tractive effort and those really slippery steel floor conditions. So it's a great feature. Those guys are loving it. Well, I got to tell you what, I'm impressed watching you run that machine. You really make that cat purr. Why don't we give Brad a round of applause? Nine line of sight operation, cat command technology is coming online. So Brad, you got some more work to do, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I got a dozer I need to run in Illinois, a D6XE. Uh, so I'm going to just flip a button here as soon as I park this machine for you. And I'm going to go switch to that tractor in Illinois and run it for a little while on a finished grade application. All right, sounds like we're on a shift change. So let's bring in the ground crew and let's go have a deeper look at this 930 and let's do a service walk around and get this thing machete, this machine ready to go back to work. So I'm gonna invite Brian Kane to come on in and take a look at this machine with us. In he comes with that UTV the Rutt is so excited about. And we're gonna do a quick walk around to this tractor before we put it back to work. All right, Brian, welcome to the job site. Now, as Brian approaches, he is actually going to keep an A-stop handy, what's called an off-stop. So notice that we've still got a solid blue light on that machine. It's telling us it's command ready to be connected. So what the first thing he's going to do is approach that machine with an all-stop, just in case something goes wrong, and he's going to talk it over to manual mode. After he's in manual operation mode, he's got full control of it. You can see that the lights have gone out. Now, why don't we bring Brian around? He's gonna dust off those rear optic detection sensors as an option, just like modern cars and trucks. You start to get close to an object, like a UTV right behind you, you're gonna get a beep, 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 an extra eye, an extra ear on the job site to keep you safe. Now, as he pops that large service door, Brian, what's your appraisal of the machine in there? Well, Joel, we got uh, we got some fancy new light in here, right? So this really makes it nice for the operator. We got long days, right? So we start early, we work late, especially around here this time of the year. So. That way we can see exactly what we need to do. We can check our oil from ground level here for sure. We got our fuel water separator that we're able to look at, kind of see what's going on there. Um, everything that we would need to know as far as a pre-shift is right here, just for us to see right at hand. So it's very, very nice. Well, I'll tell you what, I agree. I'll tell you, you hop in that hood and those lights come on. We know you start early. We know you work late. We were thinking of operators that do exactly what you do and thank you for it. How about that death tank? You ever have death on your shoes, diesel exhaust fluid? Yeah, I tend to spill a lot of stuff and when I get out there in the work, right? I'm not really too clean cut of a person, so you just never know. I might spill some stuff, but they have this uh, nice function on this machine. Uh, pretty much, if we get down to about three quarters, we're able to put a full jug into this. So what that does for the operator, uh, maybe a smaller contractors, we don't have a lot of death fluid left over, right? So we're able to fill that up, we get rid of the death, and that way we don't have to contaminate the extra uh, fluid. And then also what's pretty nice on this is the, as long as we have the key on, we're able to uh, uh, we hear the horn honk, so that way we know it's full. We don't spill it on our boots, Joel. So oh, that's great, a nice welcome addition. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, slips, trips, and falls. One of the biggest hazards on a work site. Three points of contact. We take that very seriously at Caterpillar across all our products. I'm going to invite Brian to go on and jump up there. Wash the front windshield from that single platform. He can pull the windshield wiper back. He can wipe that full single piece screen, and he can put it back to work while maintaining three points of contact. He's got a good tread, so he's not going to lose his footing as he comes up and he goes back down. Now, the last service point that we need to get on is with is getting this machine greased. Put it back to work, and as you go back to get your grease gun, you might say, hey, Brian, welcome to the 21st century. You what? don't need a grease gun. We don't need one? Automatic Are you sure, Joel? greasing. I'm sure of it. And why don't yes. you show our audience where this is? Now, the integration is amazing because this is fully telematics ready using the brain of the machine. By using the brain of the machine, we can do some really cool things. As an example, if it's sitting there idling but not working, we're not going to grease it. We're not going to pump a puddle of grease out onto that machine. But when it's working, you bet we'll keep greasing it, and a warm joint in motion takes grease quite well. The other nice thing about it, telematics. If there's a fault code, if the reservoir needs filled back full of grease, guess what? The operator knows, the screen's gonna tell him. Back office knows, because Telematics Product Link has sent them a note. Now, how about those tires? Are they looking okay, Brian, as you walk around? They're looking real nice, Joel. Yeah, they're really looking up to snuff for me. So uh, just do kind of a pre-walk around on the machine, just kind of check it out a little bit, right? So don't really carry a tire gauge around with me a whole lot, but 
Sometimes we top uh, operators maybe two and a half lugs on the ground, looks real nice. But uh, just depends on the environment we're in also. So it could be uh, we're out here in uh, Nevada area where it's very warm, right? So it could change throughout the day for sure on us, right? Depends yep. on the application. Yep, it, it sure can. I'll tell you what, that extra eye on the job site, we've got one more to share with you. Tire pressure monitoring. How many of you guys drive a modern car or truck that tells you if the tire pressure is low? Show of hands. All right, thanks for the participation. And the wheel loaders have got this too, fully integrated in. If you start to lose pressure, it's going to let you as an operator know. Also through telematics, back office, they're going to know, hey, that 930 got a front left low tire. Why don't you get that pump back up? Now, how would you judge that machine getting up in there and getting comfortable? You ready to go to work? Yeah, I feel like I'm really ready to go to work. I've got this curved glass design on here that really lets me um, see what I'm doing with the task at hand. In uh, these, these uh, loaders like this, we've got the black bucket on, so we're able to kind of uh, take this uh, bucket off and maybe go some work tools, maybe some brooms. So really a visual for the operator to definitely see what he or she may be doing, yes. Yeah, you're looking good up there. I'll tell you what, how do you feel about the controls? Are they moving with you? Yeah, they're seat mount controls. We talked a little bit about that, how those work. So um, my good friend uh, Tyler talked about those in the backhoe also, if you've ever seen that demo. But with this one, same thing. We bounce around in this machine, so that way it's right at our hand and it works great. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Now, I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of folks in and out of that machine throughout the week and all the demos that we've done. How are you going to make sure it remembers you, Brian? Well, maybe I'll put an operator profile in here. It pulls up my name, Brian Kane, and then I can put anything I would like in there. My good buddy Randy, maybe he drives this uh, as a forklift all the time, so he's able to put what he likes in there. I personally like to set my kickouts, have those all ready to go for me, so that way I can work throughout the day. Yep, yep, and so 25 different operator profiles can be put in there. I could have a code, you could have a code, and when you put yours in, welcome back, Brian Kane, and it returns all of the settings to his preferred. It's also gonna track diagnostics, fuel burn, totals, so you can actually judge how good of an operator you are, and let's find out for ourselves, Brian, why don't we go ahead and put this machine to work? Okay, Joel, well, first of all, we've got some red lights going on here, so I think it's, Probably like most jobs, we got our supervisor parked right behind us like this. So we need to get them out of the way. We have these lights that go off in here that kind of tells me something's behind me you know, in that detection pro uh, process. So rear object detection is helping you extra eye on the job site there. You got it, Joel. Very, very nice. All right, so let's put this 930 to work. And I'll tell you, what, I got a challenge for you, Brian. Yes, sir. I want to see spot on 14 tons in that 725. Tell me how you're going to do it. Am I still going to have a job at the end of the day, Joel? Depends on how close you get, Brian. Okay, we'll try it. And you said 14 tons, sir? 14 tons. Let's make it happen. Okay, so there we're able to program 14 tons into the machine. Uh, we know what that is in the monitor. So with that uh, being said, we can know real life weight as we're putting it into the truck. So uh, again, depends on the material type, depends on what we're doing. But on this one, we're going to try four buckets today. So the first two or three buckets, we probably don't even need to pay attention to what we're doing on this monitor. It just weighs as we go. And then that way, we're able to kind of see and, and pay attention to what we're doing in the pile, right? So we talk a little bit about uh, performance series buckets. So with that being said, we've got a longer floor on this bucket. We've got some side uh, curvature on that that helps me really retain the material as I'm going into the pile. Um, and then I'm able to penetrate that material. So are you saying that bucket's a good operator or you're a good operator, Brian? Which well, way around I is it? Well, I really designed this, uh, this bucket to make uh, good operators out of anybody, Joel. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, my other observation is, man, you're just not spinning tires and burning up rubber. How are you using features to help you do that? No, we, so, uh, we have a couple different options on this. One, I'd like to mention the differential lock. So on the trigger of a, on my joystick here, I'm able to hit this trigger underneath here and then that way it puts me in a differential mode so depends on the underfooting that I might have and then the other option is we have um, we're able to change this from a hydrostat hydrostat to a torque or maybe even to an ice mode so it depends on the underfoot we may have I'm able to put that into whatever I may be digging throughout the day well I'll tell you what you really are making it look easy and you're sneaking up on this fourth pass how's that payload count look yeah well, I, I see that Joel and oh oh my look at I've got too much, right? So pretty much I have different options that I'm able to do. Again, I got to talk in there a little bit, kind of lost where I was. But what we have is we can have different options with this. We can tip off to the truck. We can tip off to the pile, right? So we have it set up right now where we can tip off to the pile. We're able to meter that material off. So that way we can kind of see what we need. 
and we've gotten pretty close, but I may not have done as well as you would like. We'll Uh-oh, Chad Kermeens, where are you? We might have to have a talking with Brian, but man, he's making that work look easy. He really is. Now, it sounds like we might have the video queued up for Associated Terminals. I'd love to see that on the big screen. Let's make it real for you with a customer that puts this to work and really values taking operators out of hazardous environments, making them more efficient. They can work up and down the coastlands. Now, Brian, as you bring that to a close, go ahead and bring that machine on back. So here's a really nice visual. Imagine being Midland on the Mississippi River. It's tidal, heavy currents, and trying to do this type of work and keep every one of those buckets full that's coming out of that barge. And the machines, as you get down to the scraps, they need to be pushing up those stockpiles, making sure that every bucket is full. Now imagine traversing ship to barge, barge to ship, in and out of the machine, up and down ladders. Recognized hazard. So applaud it. What Associated Terminals has done is they've removed their operators from that environment. And just like Brad Vanderveer was at the beginning of the show, they're sitting comfortably in an office close to a coffee machine, close to their lunch. They might be wearing basketball shorts and they're not putting on seat belts because they're sitting right there on the ground in a comfortable station. So invite you guys to come and talk with our experts. We are here working for you. Thank you for what you do. Appreciate you being here in Cat Operator Stadium. Cat Command Technologies across the small loader family. We've got one running in North Carolina right here in Vegas. That's 2,300 miles away to make this real. Thank you very much, all. What an amazing demonstration. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen, in the machines, too. If you look up on the screen, we got a QR code for you. Take your camera phone out. Go to take a picture of this. You can follow that link for the great giveaway. You can scan that check-in for the Spotlight Series. We've got cat hats, cat phones, even a cat mini excavator we are giving away this week. We're going to come back after a quick break with Mike Rowe for Titan of the Trades.